Hey there, what's up everyone? Hope you're doing excellent today. So in this video, I'm gonna be covering the top major updates from Apple's WWDC Worldwide Developers Conference that was held yesterday, June 23rd, 2020. We're gonna be covering the most important updates in this quick five minute video, so let's jump right in. All right, so let's start off with one of Apple's biggest softwares and coming very soon is gonna be iOS 14. So they give us a sneak peek onto some of the new things that it's gonna bring. So iOS 14 is gonna bring something called the app library and what that is pretty much gonna do is it's gonna allow you to organize your apps even better so that you don't have to have so many pages uh, with so many apps. So you're pretty much gonna be able to just hide your apps and whenever you wanna search for apps, you just scroll to the side and the app library will come up and you'll be able to see the main apps that you use mostly along with all your other apps organized into particular categories, making them very easy to find. And like I said, you'll be able to hide all those pages that you have because of all your apps so that you don't have to be scrolling around looking for your apps. And once you press on the app, it will directly launch the app straight from the app library. Also, iOS 14 is gonna bring what's called smart stack widgets. So you'll be able to customize your screens and set different widgets in whichever place you prefer. Also, it's gonna come with different types of widgets and the smart stack widget will be a widget that can be several different widgets all in one. So you just use that one widget, you scroll up and down and it will change uh, through the different widgets until you get to the one that you wish to use. And also smart stack widgets, you can also set them up to be automatic so that throughout the day, the widgets will change by themselves depending on the time of day it is. So you can set each widget to change and come up at a certain time throughout the day. Another cool thing that iOS 14 is gonna bring is picture in picture video. So I know like myself, sometimes I'm using YouTube and then and I have to get out of YouTube to go check something else. And once you do that, the video that was playing will automatically stop playing or the music will automatically stop playing. So with picture in picture video, you'll be able to slide the video to the left of your screen and the video will maintain playing, but you'll be able to use your phone and search for other things that you may need to search for while continuing to uh, listen to whatever it was you were listening to or watching uh, whatever video it was that you were watching. Another very important thing that has been updated is Siri is now gonna be an even more seamless process to use Siri. Uh, before, when you would call Siri, it would pretty much take over your whole screen. And now it's just gonna be a small uh, little section on the phone that will pop up whenever you're using Siri. So it won't take you out of whatever screen you're using on your phone when you decide to use Siri. And also Siri has been updated to use more web resources to provide you with more information and be able to answer those deeper questions that you may have. iOS 14 is also gonna bring what's called the Translate app. So very similar to Google Translate, but the new Translate app is gonna work offline and comes with 11 languages. So very nice to use in case you're not connected to the internet anywhere and you need to translate something, uh, you'll be able to use Apple Translate app to do that. So messages has also been updated. In messages, now you'll be able to pin important conversations uh, with those that uh, you decide to so that they will always show up on the top of the messages app when you open it and they will be prioritized so that you can get to those important conversations quicker. Also, Memojis has been updated as well. They have added up to 20 new hairstyles, headwears. They've even added face covers now. Your Memojis will be able to select from different ages as well to personalize them even more. And you'll be able to create stickers now easier from your Memojis. Group messages has also been updated. Uh, now you'll be able to mention certain people in the group just by typing in their name and they will be notified if they have their notification settings turned on uh, when you send a message uh, mentioning somebody in the group message. And you can also set that up for yourself to only be notified when somebody in the group chat mentions you in the chat as well. And that way it will be able to organize the chat and find certain messages that are more related to you. Maps has also been updated. It's gonna come now with better navigation, look around features, richer details in the maps for businesses, streets, and signs, and also more accurate places info for local spots. They've also done a lot of updates for cycling, also EV routing so that if you have an electrical vehicle and uh, you're running out of juice, uh, it's gonna automatically search for the nearest and quickest charge spot so that you can get there quickly to charge your vehicle. CarPlay has also been updated and through NFC technology, you'll be able to now start your vehicles just with your iPhone. However, uh, BMW is the only manufacturer right now that is compatible with this feature, but more manufacturers are looking to uh, provide functionality for this feature 
future in 2021 and beyond. So you're gonna have digital keys on your phone, which uh, you'll use to turn on your vehicle. Your vehicle will read it through NFC technology, and you'll also be able to share those keys uh, with anyone that you also want access to turning your vehicle on as well. All right, so let's move on to iPad OS. So iPad OS is gonna come with all of the features from uh, iOS 14 that the iPhone will use, uh, but the iPad OS 14 will have some extra features as well. So iPad OS 14 is gonna come with sidebars now for many apps uh, so that you can have a sidebar while you're using an app to have extra functionality for the app that you're using. And this is gonna work with the Photos app, Notes, Files, Music, and many other apps as well. Also, the incoming calls on iPads has been updated usually in the past. Uh, when you have an incoming call on your iPad, it will completely take over the whole screen uh, and all you'll see is that incoming call. Well, not anymore. Now they have minimized that incoming call function uh, to just a small part on the screen so that you can continue uh, using or viewing whatever it is that you're doing when an incoming call is coming in and it won't take you out of whatever it is that you're doing every time you receive a call. Also, search on the iPad has been updated as well. Now it's going to be more of a universal search box where kind of like on Macs uh, where you can click on the search straight from the home screen and uh, type in a few letters and it will automatically populate and find files on your iPad or also on the web as well. So search has been definitely updated uh, to quickly get you to wherever it is that you want to get to with your iPad. Apple Pencil for the iPad has also been updated. Now with your pencil, you're going to be able to copy and paste just like you do with regular text, uh, certain words and drawings that you make with your pencil. Also, it's going to have the function now to correct drawings all through the Scribble app, uh, which you'll be able to write stuff with the pencil and it will automatically uh, convert it into text. So moving on to AirPods. So the AirPod Pros have been updated as well. So now the AirPods are going to come with automatic switching between all your devices. So uh, sometimes I'm using my iPhone and I want to automatically change to use my AirPods on my Mac or on uh, my iPad. And you actually have to go into settings and disconnect from your iPhone and connect with the new device. Well, not any longer. You won't have to do this anymore. Apple is fixing this. Uh, and now it's going to have automatic switching between all your devices for your AirPods. So excellent update there as well. AirPod Pro are also going to have a new spatial audio, which is better state of the art surround sound for your AirPod Pros. So it's going to make you feel more like you're in a movie theater and it's going to make the sound feel more realistic with the motions of your body and your head, giving the sound a richer quality for your AirPod Pros. So moving on to Watch OS 7, also coming up with some great updates. So Apple Watches now have up to 20,000 apps specially made just for Apple Watches. Now you'll be able to share watch faces on social media and through messages with your closest friends. It's also going to come with more detailed app complications for certain apps. Maps on the Apple Watch has also been updated as well to give more detailed uh, navigation information through your Apple Watch. The workout app on your Apple Watch has also added a new dance feature to keep track of the calories burned uh, throughout the day when your watch senses that you are doing a dance type of physical exercise. Also, another great Apple Watch feature is wine down. So what this is going to do is it's going to make it easier for you to establish a daily routine for you to wake up and go to sleep at the same time every day. And wind down will actually notify you uh, about an hour ahead of time of the bedtime that you set, uh, reminding you to start winding down and it will automatically start dimming the lights on your devices and on your iPhone. And we'll also turn on do not disturb automatically so that you can relax and start settling in and get ready for bed. Another great feature now with the Apple Watch is it's going to have a sensor for when you're washing your hands. So it's going to track the movement of your hands when you're washing them uh, and a countdown will automatically start for the amount of time that it displays so that you can wash your hands completely in a correct way. Apple is also updating their privacy. Apple is very known for their security and privacy and they are updating this as well with data minimization on device intelligence so that the dev your devices don't have to send uh, frequent information to servers uh, to diagnose the issues. It will do this on the devices themselves to decrease the amount of information flowing through servers from your Apple devices. Also, sign in with Apple. It's a new Apple sign in feature that it will uh, begin to be used on more websites, uh, just like Facebook sign in and Google sign in. Apple is now going to have this feature as well. Also, uh, with Maps, they're coming out with a new feature where you can share your approximate location. So uh, maybe to somebody you don't want to share your exact location. Now you'll be able to just share uh, a approximate location so that you don't have to fully disclose exactly where you are at a certain moment. Apple Home has also been updated with adaptive lighting. Cameras will have updated notification settings and will now offer facial recognition.
recognition. So uh, if you have cameras maybe on your doorstep, it will now be able to use the facial recognition features to alert you and let you know that someone is at your doorstep. Apple TV has also been updated. Now it's offer picture in picture function. You'll be able to be watching two videos at the same time on your Apple TV screen. And it works with AirPlay as well from your iPhone, from your Mac, from your iPad. And another update, Apple TV Plus, which is Apple's series of movies and shows similar to Netflix and Disney Plus. Apple is coming out with many new shows to entertain you. And there's one that they're working on for 2021, which ve which seems very promising. Uh, and it's called Foundation. Uh, and I'm sure you can look it up on YouTube or Google and check out the trailer for that. Seems like a very entertaining show to watch when it comes out. So moving on to Mac OS, uh, the new Mac OS is going to be called Big Sir, and it's going to have many new updates and features as well. It's going to have new tab features on your browsers, more privacy, and also a completely new design, changing everything from the look of the OS as well as the sounds uh, that each function makes when you click on things and when you scroll around and when you open certain files. You'll also be able to customize your menu bar on your MacBook Pros and be able to decide what things you want to come up on your menu bar. And one of the biggest updates for Macs is Apple silicon. So what this is, is that Apple is going to start manufacturing and using their own chips now for all their Mac products, meaning their iMacs and MacBooks, because up to now they've been using Intel processors, Intel i3, i5, i7, i9s, uh, but Apple is now going to start using their own processors for their Mac products as well, just like they do with their Apple Bionic chipsets for their iPhones and the chipsets for their iPads as well. Now they're going to start using their own chipsets for their Macs as well. And their purpose is to be able to have a more powerful chip Chip that uses less power consumption and they're planning on being the most energy proficient chips out on the market all right everyone so those are all the major updates for apple coming up uh that were mentioned in yesterday's wwdc event 2020 so let me know in the comments down below which new update is your favorite one and go ahead and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already go ahead and give this video a like if you enjoyed it and that's it for this video i will see you in the next one and as always peace